Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Tech That. In today's episode, we'll discuss valuable ways in which teleports around the world adapt to the ever-changing telecommunications environment, specifically focusing on the growing multi-orbit networks that are advancing communication systems. By 2030, 100,000 satellites are expected to be launched into space, many which will be low Earth orbiting, LEO, or middle Earth orbiting, MEO satellites. Therefore, in this episode, we'll discuss how teleports will adapt to these increase in LEO and MEO satellites, also known as non-geostationary satellites, to become more adjusted to multi-orbit networks that are currently advancing our communication systems. The groundbreaking revolution of multi-orbit networks means that operators can now provide their users with the best geostationary and non-geostationary satellite trajectories. Non-geostationary satellites, as we explained in previous episodes, offer the benefits of low latency connections required to effectively integrate with terrestrial systems, whilst geostationary satellites provide a much wider reach over specific regions and continents Therefore, combining the strengths of both geostationary and non-geostationary satellites in the form of multi-orbit networks can bring a new market opportunity worldwide to provide solutions that vary in coverage, throughput and latency to best support operations in all sectors. Therefore, companies are beginning to use multi-orbit networks to communicate. With the direction the space industry is going in today, leaders in the sector are capitalising on different qualities of low Earth, middle Earth, and geostationary orbits, maximizing single services and cost efficiency. Because of this, sectors ranging from military communications to commercial satellite operators are looking at hybrid constellations to support their operations by combining both non-geostationary and geostationary capabilities to form a dynamic mesh network that is scalable, dependable and profitable. Geostationary ground infrastructure is already well established worldwide and existing teleports are adapting to support non-geostationary technology. However, the future of non-geostationary satellites involves using inter-system satellite links that provide laser beam connections between one satellite and another. With the advantage of geostationary satellites, however, companies will still benefit from using multi-orbit networks as a means of communication, even when inter-system links are widely used. So let's talk about some significant ways teleports adapt to the increased use of geostationary satellites involving more multi-orbit networks. Firstly, research has shown that more gateways are being designed within teleports worldwide than ever before. Even non-geostationary satellites must be accompanied by an installation of multiple antennas effectively built to support it. Due to the much closer placement of non-geostationary satellites to Earth, the visibility they hold of the Earth is limited, resulting in the need for significant gateways to connect with them. Teleports worldwide have also started implementing innovative technologies to support non-geostationary gateways and to support multi-orbit systems. The antennas and functions are different when comparing non-geostationary and geostationary gateways, as non-geostationary gateways require much more switching between them, which is supported by the latest technological developments just as specific algorithms that allow antennas to follow a satellite automatically and effectively. Thus, these advancements have been designed to manage fields of LEO antennas with advanced scheduling and deconflicting technology, whilst using the XY positioners, three axis mounts and other technologies to help antennas track in every single direction to accommodate every imaginable satellite pass. Moreover, teleports have started prioritising rapid manufacturing and deployments consisting of universal processes, anticipation of faster rollouts of technology. Efficient antenna designs have fostered success in simplifying the deployment process. As a result, the amount of time to install new infrastructure is reduced, as is the level of expertise required to install it. Lastly, digital intermediate frequency, or IF, and virtualization has been adopted to gain new efficiencies with fewer investments while protecting one quality of service. Digital IF extends the transport of analog IF to IP-based networks to provide more flexibility in ground station architecture and enable data networks to perform similar tasks. These adoptions and backup gateways help prevent service interruptions in such a way that when interruptions occur, the end user or consumer never knows preventative measures or engineering work has taken place. These technologies also enable a platform approach for unified management at scale. Since the 60s, the satellite industry hasn't experienced much change 
apart from miniaturization and cost reduction. In the past 20 years, however, change within the ground segment was relatively stagnant. Satellite technology wasn't changing, thus the ground segment set firmly in its roots and perfected its craft. The ground segment has responded and continues to adapt to support the estimated growth of non-geostationary and multi-orbit space revenue with flexible, reliable, fast antenna delivery and scalable, innovative software infrastructure. Rather than seeing non-geostationary satellites as competition to geostationary, we believe the increase in non-geostationary satellites will benefit geostationary services and vice versa. After all, the geostationary orbit satellites have a wide-ranging orbit and act as a mature marketing equipment that is widely available and cost-effective. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode of Tech That. We hope you learned about the benefits of using multi-orbit networks in space for communication. Make sure to comment on what you'd like to see from us next and don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Bye!